ladies and gentlemen, I bring you a rare spectacle. A reality show star selling out. You know the bed feels warm. To explain how someone from reality TV has any ideals to sell out to begin with, I'm going to need to give you another recent history lesson in pop music. You see, in the late 90s and early 2000s, we had a certain understanding of what pop starlets were. They were very hot and marketed as sex symbols, made entirely synthetic music that was either sexy dance jams or cuckooing love songs, and usually had little to no depth in their lyrics. Basically, they were like real-life versions of Bratz dolls, and were made from the same materials. But somewhere in the middle of that decade, a different kind of pop star took over. The kind who decided that being a professionally groomed and marketed studio act didn't mean sacrificing their sincerity or losing a personal connection to their music. Now, these were acts like Avril Lavigne, Pink, Michelle Branch, Ashley Simpson, even Christina Aguilera to some extent. And one of the most prominent figures in that subgenre was American Idol winner Kelly Clarkson. A moment like this. Now for the first short phase of her career, she had been dismissed as a vocally talented but personality free vehicle for the vapid drivel that American Idol calls music. But then Since You've Been Gone hit. And all of a sudden, average pop fans and highbrow music critics alike were enchanted by the story of how this underperforming reality show winner shook off her handlers and took control of her own career and made the music she wanted to make. And for a while, Kelly Clarkson was someone people took very seriously, especially when she announced that her next album would be even more personal, not to mention darker, and wouldn't use any professional songwriters. It was a controversial move that brought her in conflict with her record head who thought people wouldn't like it. Keep in mind that Kelly's appeal at that point was that she was the girl next door. Cute, but not a supermodel. Relatable. It definitely wasn't this. That first single was so bitter and abrasive it made You Oughta Know sound like you light up my life. And the public didn't seem to care for it either. The album sold poorly, and Kelly ended up canceling a major tour and firing her manager in the aftermath. <sighs> I guess there just isn't a market for a pop star who wasn't supermodel hot or rail thin making an album full of bitter breakup songs. Oh, wait! Yeah, that album failed not because it was too angry, but because it wasn't very good. For all the talk of a big leap forward, the album ended up basically just sounding like a less catchy version of the album that came before it. And that was pretty much the end of Kelly Clarkson's career as someone who makes serious artistic statements. Now that's not to say that she's been unsuccessful since then. Far from it, she's released two more albums and had a very respectable number of hits, including two number one singles on the Hot 100 and another one on the country charts. She's been plenty successful. What she hasn't been is relevant or interesting. Never less so on this last single, Stronger Parentheses What Doesn't Kill You. A title which right off the bat tells you everything you need to know about it pretty much. It goes well with what I imagine are other songs on the album like In Yourself Believe or Give Up Don't. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger Stand a little taller Doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone What doesn't You know, I really did like Kelly Clarkson at one point, but I've listened several times to this four chord bore fest pop song chords. Know them, love them, live them. And I just can't shake the impression that Kelly Clarkson just isn't trying anymore. And this song hit number one, and that baffles me because there's absolutely nothing memorable about it. She's still got a great voice, but I'm embarrassed for her that she's been reduced to something this soulless. Let me try and explain. So, in case the title didn't give it away, apparently Kelly has been dumped, again, but she's okay, because you know what always makes me feel better after a breakup? Clichés. Lots of them. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, stand a little taller, doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone, just me, myself, and I. When life hands you lemons, make lemonade. Nice guys finish last. Knowledge is power. Winners don't use drugs. My god, the pain of being dumped is already fading. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Or maybe, what doesn't kill you is just killing you slowly. I first read that line on the internet ten years ago. The rebuttal to the cliché is itself now a cliché. That's how cliché it is. 
What doesn't kill you makes you stronger than All right. I can't talk about the song without talking about that other breakup song she did. The fact is that Kelly Clarkson is going to be haunted by Since You've Been Gone for the rest of her life. Way too many of her songs in the past few years have either sounded like Since You've Been Gone or been about the same thing as Since You've Been Gone. You know my dream in color and do the things I want. I, I, I've heard this. I've heard it over and over again because this is like the fifth version of I Will Survive that she's recorded. Hell, I don't even have to think back very far because Mr. Know-It-All, the single she released right before this one, was exactly like this. Stunning. Here, let me write that next verse for you. Mr. Pick your nose, will ya? Like to pick your nose, yeah, yeah. Always pick your nose with your fingers up your nose. And think that come back. Look, I love Since You've Been Gone, but artistically, Kelly Clarkson is just treading water. This would be the equivalent if Michael Jackson had released two or three songs where he said that the kid was not his son. One, it gets old. Two, you'd stop believing him. And that's the main reason why this is a disappointment. It's just not very credible. I mean, she tries so hard to prove that she's totally okay with not being with this guy that she winds up way too far on the other end of the spectrum because she indicates absolutely no sorrow about this. I mean, she's not sad that she got dumped. She's not sad that she wasted her time with him in the first place. You know the bed feels warmer Sleeping here alone <laughs> Right. It just doesn't feel real. I mean, as far as breakup songs go, it pales horribly in comparison to Adele's blockbuster hits, and it's also worse than Beyonce's string of man-bashing singles, where she's human enough to at least feel angry. More importantly, it's much worse than Since You've Been Gone. In that one, she may have decided she doesn't need this guy and she's better off without him, but that doesn't mean she's not irritated with this guy or disappointed that things didn't work out. But in Stronger, there's absolutely no acknowledgement that she had anything invested in the relationship. Told you I was on. For all I can tell, she started dating this guy specifically to get dumped, solely to prove that she would be totally okay after it happened. Stronger. But the bigger problem is that if she doesn't have any investment in the relationship, then there's no triumph. There's no arc. The whole idea behind what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is that you take your pain and you learn to withstand it and become tougher as a result. But if the breakup didn't hurt you at all, then you overcame nothing. Your success doesn't matter if you didn't struggle with anything. No one cares. Trust me. Hey Hope, guess what? I've been clean and drug free now for a hundred days. Hey, that's uh, that's a, wait, 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 you had a drug problem? Nope. Like, any actual details of the relationship are vague and they don't seem to make much sense. What doesn't kill you makes a she describes the relationship entirely in terms of fight metaphors, which, uh... That I'd come back, I'd come back which doesn't strike me as a very healthy attitude. It's a lot like Pat Benatar's Hit Me With Your Best Shot, but instead of being silly and cute, it was meant to be taken dead seriously. It's like the songwriters couldn't remember if they were trying to write another Since You've Been Gone or a new Eye of the Tiger. Not only that, it makes her account of the guy in the situation less believable. Now, in Mr. Know-It-All, the lyrics are kind of clumsy, but at the very least you get details about the variety of dick this guy is. You He's the kind of douchebag who puts people down to feel better about himself. He's controlling and arrogant. I get that. That at least sounds like a real person who existed. But in Stronger, the way she describes the guy, he sounds almost cartoonishly evil. Think you got the best in me. Think you've had the last laugh. You tried to break me, but you see <laughs> I broke up with her. And now she's all heartbroken and shit. <laughs> what? Doesn't kill you, makes you She's totally okay because she's strong and independent? No! I'll get you next time, Kelly Clarkson! Seriously, who is this guy you dated? Newman? Why were you with this guy at all? And isn't it a little hypocritical to call this guy vindictive and then go on to brag to him about how great it is that he's gone? I mean, she goes on and on about how she does what she wants. Do the things I want. 
She can go wherever she chooses. She can eat her dinner at a fancy restaurant, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, you got a new guy now, so that's another reason things are totally awesome now. That's great. Wait a minute. What happened to not being lonely when you're alone? I thought you were sleeping alone? Did I imagine that? You just made this guy up, didn't you? Let me guess, does he live in Canada? Not around much, I'm guessing? Yeah, I don't remotely believe for a second that this song was inspired by anything other than the fact that self-empowerment anthems sell pretty well, especially for Kelly Clarkson. But, if I were to believe that an actual person was saying these things, I'd have to conclude that they were in some deep denial because no one actually thinks like this. I think I, that's all I have to say about this one. It's unoriginal, it's unconvincing, it's my least favorite Kelly Clarkson song in a while, and it's just... What is this? Hey Todd, uh, I'm sorry to call you for like the 60th time today, but are you sure you don't want to like rewatch some, I don't know, like a Meg Ryan thing, like French Kiss? We haven't watched French Kiss. I have not tied you down and made you watch French Kiss. You want to do that now, right? Yeah. Answer still no. <laughs> yeah, look. How do I put this gently? I know you think you need me. That if you can't have me, life is a worthless, unceasing torture. Oh, pizza's here. Gotta go. Well, you know what? Fine. I don't need you. I, oh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and you made me stronger by your unceasing rejection. Who's got two thumbs and enjoys all the loneliness? Me! That's who! You know what? This air right here where you could be standing and being warm and kissing and touching me right now, it feels great! <laughs> Hello? Still there? Hello? Pizza makes me stronger. Make it harder, make it better, do it faster, makes us stronger, all that ever.